Well, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Matt and Sequi, who very much wanted to be here this morning, but unfortunately at the last minute had to cancel his participation. But I bring you his greetings and his encouragement for the field that I know he takes extremely seriously. Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here today to contribute to the discussions on the subject which is essential for all of us and is an important part, as Mr. Alesi mentioned, of our baby's road towards the European Union. The internet is a key and growing engine for economic growth and employment, for better services and for good government. And broadband is an important part of making the possibilities of the net real for citizens. Research on 13 developed countries, including the G8 countries, shows that the internet accounted for 21% of their GDP growth over the last five years. Now to fully comprehend this force for prosperity, we need to consider that economic value created by the internet falls outside of the technology sector very largely with 75% of the benefits captured by companies in more traditional industries. So it's about the whole of the economy. In one of the member states of the European Union, the UK, for example, the internet already represents 8.3% of the GDP. And this is extremely important. The internet has created 2.6 jobs each job lost to technology-related efficiencies. So, in days of economic and financial hardship, it's imperative that policymakers act on such data and tap into the immense potential of the internet. Now, this is part of Albania working towards competitiveness at EU level, as Minister Alesi quite correctly pointed out. Investments in broadband are instrumental in this respect. At the EU level, this is a major priority. The EU digital agenda, which is a central part of EU efforts for smart, green and sustainable growth, aims at 100% basic broadband coverage by the end of this year and high-speed broadband coverage for all by 2020. Now the reason is simple. All the services that can be digitalized, including healthcare, banking, energy, business, and education, necessitate high-speed broadband, which is delivered efficiently and reliably. We've made very good progress in meeting our targets within the European Union. In 2011, 95.7% of EU homes had at least basic level fixed broadband service. 50% of EU homes had next generation access broadband. In Albania, as the European Commission's progress report noted this year, broadband penetration has grown to 4.9% from 3.5% in 2011. However, this is still low by regional and European standards. Ministers Harito and Alesi have already spoken uh, of some of the ways which uh, Albania is trying to address this. It's clear that it's a big challenge. Investments in broadband are certainly not cheap, but they do pay off through economic growth, job creation, and very importantly, citizen satisfaction. It's not just about broadband, though. it's about a vision for growth, accountability, and equality. The internet economy should be fostered in ways that not only create jobs and serve citizens better, but that also protect fundamental rights and freedoms including those related to personal data protection, and make the benefits of the net accessible to all citizens. Putting in place an effective legal and institutional infrastructure is essential to avoid digital handcuffs and a digital divide. It's also essential to progress towards the European Union and part of Albania's Stabilisation and Association Agreement. Again, Minister Alesi underlined this. This is the legal agreement between Albania and the European Union until membership. So this is the legally binding framework through which Albania can progress towards the European Union. It contains targets, binding targets, 
for the reform of legislation, including in electronic media. Now, Albania is not alone in doing this. The EU is providing a great deal of assistance to Albania in meeting its digital challenges. Over the past eight years, the EU has supported IT solutions for better services to citizens in various ways, through a total of 4.5 million euros of EU taxpayers' money. We have helped Albania to draft the National Information and Communication Technology Strategy. We have supported the establishment and operation of the National Agency for Information Society, which included assistance to review or draft new ICT laws. And we've provided ICT equipment for Albanian ministries and agencies. Now, in view of our efforts and the hard work needed ahead, I welcome very much the organisation of today's conference and the possibility to be open for focused discussions in this very important area. It's an opportunity for policymakers and other stakeholders to reflect on important and challenging issues and to act for a digital future of prosperity, efficiency and openness that contributes to Albania's road towards the European Union. Thank you very much.